All right, shalom, shalom. Shalom, everybody, this evening. Uh, Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I guess you guys may be already seeing this in mainstream media in the United States there. Uh, Israel has struck the Syrian military uh, just across the Golan. Uh, it's being reported on several different outlets here. And uh, we have, of course, Sputnik has brought it up already since I reported it wasn't on any mainstream media as of yet. We threw up that just that quick video for you guys. But uh, it says Israel forces targeted Syrian artillery after mortar fire near the Golan Heights. Now, what's troubling to me, though, I'm really beginning to think that the, uh, the elite of the Israeli government has hijacked the identity of the Jewish people to begin with. Uh, because there's, there's, this is just not the true heart of the Jewish people to be doing what's going on in Syria. Now, I know immediately there's going to be those that would say that Israel is defending itself. They have warned again over and over and over that the Syrian government will bear responsibility for any types of mortars that fall inside of Israel. All right. I would agree with that under the uh, true idea that it is actually the Syrian government launching those uh, shells into Israel. But what's happening is the ISIS militants, when they are losing the battle, they'll just turn a mortar around, fire it into Israel so they can get some defense on their side. This is what is really happening. And this is what is a crime uh, and, and, and very, very troubling to begin with. Uh, also, this is brought out on, uh, uh, oh gosh, what is this? This is Fort Russ is what that is, Fort Russ. Breaking Israel defends ISIS and attacks Syria near Golan Heights by uh, Joaquin Flores. And, you know, I hate to say it, guys, but the man's telling the truth. He's not lying about it. He's telling the truth about this. It says, Israel, Syria, Israel has attacked Syria with a missile strike targeting a position held by the Syrian Arab Army in al Qom, a town near the occupied Golan Heights in Syria, which I don't like to call it the occupied for the simple reason is we know that Bashar al-Assad was willing to surrender this land here to make peace with Israel. Uh, this comes as the government forces crack down on ISIS-related jihadi groups in the area. Israel's history of supporting ISIS has been documented by the Atlantis press as well. Israel giving secret aid to the Syrian rebels. Report says direct funding, food, fuel, medical supplies allegedly provided by Israeli state to keep ISIS and Iranian allied forces in neighboring civil war at bay. All right, now let me tell you something. I'll tell you just like it is. I have a good friend of mine. He lives up there in the Golan. He is former uh, military, Israeli military, and he has shared with me personally and privately, I've shared this with you guys many times before, that he stated that indeed the ISIS militants have been noted to have succeed on. I mean, there, there's some major problems going on, especially with President Trump saying Obama actually created ISIS. I apologize for the lighting on here, guys. I see that our lighting is really bad, but actually you guys can see the screen probably better in, in behind me there. So <clears throat> I'm very concerned about the support of ISIS. I know that Israel is supporting Al-Qaeda, uh, Al-Nusra with, with, with uh, medical treatment, things like that. And I would not have a problem with Israel doing humanitarian aid in that in that type of uh, nature, if it wasn't for the fact that Miss Livni goes on uh, onto RT News, and when she's asked about this, of course she says this is a humanitarian uh, situation that Israel is doing, and then if, then it's asked back, well, if it was the Syrian army, would you do the same for the Syrian army? And she says, no way. I can't. She said, I cannot even believe you're even suggesting that we would give medical aid to the Syrian army. Well, of course you should. I mean, it, what, what is that What is that one, one scripture? Let me see if I can pull it up on Esau real quick. <clears throat> you know, I got this lighting about to drive me nuts, guys. Give me one second. We've got to do something about the lighting here. Give me one second. I thought I had this all fixed before we came on. Just bear with me. I don't like to run off from the screen here, but we got, that's a big issue, the lighting right now. So let's just quickly that should work better. I get the 
the overhead light on and then I forget about the other light that we need as well. So anyway, so it's very troubling when I see this. Uh, uh, I, I actually, right, Hawk, <laughs> share, shine the light. More ways than one, right? So let's let's quickly go to eSword, and because uh, we so we we forget as believers who Syria really is for us. Uh, I think if you just put the Syrian in, let's see here. Uh, a Laban, of course, we know Laban is called the Syrian. I think it's, I think Abraham is actually called the Syrian as well. Let me just see. Abraham. No, don't have it as Abraham. But we have multiple passages about this here. Oh, gosh. Someone sent that to me not long ago, and I, I did look it up, and it was true. Uh, now shall speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian ready to. No, that's not it. Oh, oh yeah, here that is it. That is it. Deuteronomy 26 5. All right, let me, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to pull this up on memory. Some of you guys always ask, where, where you know, which one? It's memory hyphen mechon dot hyphen memory dot org. All right, so we want Deuteronomy 26.5. Okay, and thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, a wandering Armenian was my father. Okay. Yes, that uh, 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 Armin is literally a Syrian not an Armenian, was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, a few number, and he became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. All right? Syrian is the right way to translate the word, not Armenian. Not, he's not a, it's Arme doesn't mean Armenian. Or, 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 or Aramian, Aramian. So, in other words, he's a Syrian. Abraham was called a Syrian in that particular passage right there. So, you know, we forget what our heritage is, and this is one of the reasons why I'm so much against just bombing Syria into oblivion, uh, and, and, and it's really, we're, we're looking at a hijack of our identity. Uh, you know, I'm going to be putting a video together tomorrow uh, for Patreon. Uh, those of you that, uh, we got several people following us on Patreon, about 100 people on Patreon right now. Israeli News Live. So if you want to check it out on there, Israeli News Live on Patreon, we are putting together videos there. Things that I'm more concerned about uh, would get us shut down here. We've only lo loaded one video thus far, but we will be loading another one here tomorrow on Patreon. So just encourage you to check that out. So getting back over here, uh, we have this constant moving there and the support of ISIS that's inside the region. Today's strikes represent what could be moves of de desperation the part of the, of the Zionist entity and generally are meant to test the geopolitical waters. When we say the Zionist entity, and I know these guys don't mean it for good no matter what it is, but there is an evil Zionist movement, and that is a Rothschild-invented movement to try to overtake this entire region. And, but this does not reflect the true nature of the Jewish people. The true Jewish people that love God, that are there in the land, that are, that are there to see the coming of the Mashiach, that's your true Jewish people. And just like we have, I think it's an Amos's prophecy there, we return to the land and the, and the remnant of Israel will be there for, in, in Zion forevermore. But at the same time that we return there, the Migdal Eder, the leaders of Israel, they're the ones that cause the crying. And is there no king in thee? You know, there, there's no peace, etc. That's all caused by the leaders of Israel. So God separates between the leaders and the remnant itself that are in Israel. And by the way, they're there at the same time. So this nonsense about, well, the Jews that are there are not the real Jews. Well, then the God's not the real God yet. Because uh, 
you know, <clears throat> the, the, you have to go back and really do some research. Khazars are not exactly what people think they are. All right, this whole doctrine that, oh, the Jews and Israel are the Khazars is completely ludicrous. Are there Khazars there? Sure there is. Not saying that there's not. There, there definitely is. You know, but uh, you have to remember, Israel went to that country. There was part of the groups of, of the children of Israel actually went there. But it doesn't mean that all the Jews are Khazars. I mean, that's just totally ludicrous. You know, I mean... <laughs> I don't have time to get into that one right now. It's a different issue already. Uh, let's move on real quick here. Also here, this is uh, Damascus. And again, this shows what's going on constantly. The, the air, the, even the airstrikes the U.S., French, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, British did helped give an advance for ISIS yet again. So it's not just uh, the Israeli government helping to support ISIS, but the U.S. is still supporting ISIS. In a, in a surprise attack, ISIS was able to seize dozens of buildings from the regime in uh, Tataman district area as an extensive uh, pounded amidst ongoing counter uh, counterattack there. Uh, that's what we see happening here. They took out one of their tanks. Uh, they show in this video here a very serious uh, battle going on there. We know that one of the tanks was destroyed in this battle here near Damascus. Uh, we don't know about the fate of the other tank there. But they were trying to repel ISIS back, and ISIS definitely did the overcoming in this particular attack right here. Uh, something that's not made mainstream media as of yet there, just kind of give you guys a head up. And those of you, I'm sure you heard about the Iraqis launching airstrikes against ISIS positions in Syria. The U.S. is saying that they were, doing, they were working with the U.S. coalition to do this, but this is not according to the Iraqi Air Force. In fact, the Iraqi Air Force carried out the deadly airstrikes on the ISIS uh, positions inside neighboring Syria, according to the prime minister of, of uh, Iraq, in complete cooperation with President Bashar al-Assad's government, he stated. That was interesting. So, you know, that could be very dangerous for the U.S. coalition if the Iraqis end up starting to side with the Syrian government. Uh, the only thing I can really see coming out of this, though, is that they'll end up taking the leader out and putting another puppet in there that obeys what exactly what the U.S. coalition wants them to do. By the way, too, you know, I know I heard about this thing about uh, uh, Tucker Carlson disappearing for the last three days. According to his network, he'll be on tonight, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time in the United States here. I'm really curious to see what he says. Has he been have they have they put the chain around his neck? Will he change his mind on Syria, or will he even come out more fighting against uh, what's going on? Uh, I have seen that uh, inside of uh, Germany, there was a German, uh, excuse me, German journalist, uh, television journalist, in fact, that went to Syria. He came back and absolutely stated that it was the evidence was overwhelming that this, the chemical attack in Syria was staged. Wow, you're talking about going over like a lead balloon in Germany because they support the U.S. They were quickly, his uh, colleagues were quickly saying that he had now become a pro-Assad, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it there. Very troubling. Now we see, too, the French connection, the Macron and Trump's political bromance blossoming at the Syrian strikes. That's all it takes. Blow somebody completely out of the water and shoot off a lot of bombs increase the economy for the U.S., and you become the good guy for the president of the United States and vice versa for the French president. Troubling, isn't it? This is another situation that's happening quite a bit, guys. Erdogan's notorious intelligence agency, the MIT, snatches yet another citizen identified as Orsan uh, Senyusel from the streets of Ankara, the capital of Turkey, in the middle of the night, this would be 17 reported 17th reported kidnapping and forced disappearance case. I want to see if you guys can see it's really, really wild how this how this Mr. Erdogan gets away with this. The guys, the guy over here in the this car here is going to get out. This guy pulls up, they go nabbing, and then another guy car pulls in and puts him in the car. You know, Erdogan is even bold enough to kidnap people in other countries. That's how evil and dubious this man is. It doesn't look like it's wanting to let us see this again. Um, let me just see if we get anything to work on it. I'll try to reload it like this, just to see. Aha, we'll get it this time. 
Here we go. Watch it. Watch this abduction that Erdogan does. I mean, he's given Hitler a brand new name in modern times here. Here they go. They got something to cover the guy with. They grab him. Guy's starting to pull and tug away. They get him covered up. They're forcing him, drugging him. There he goes. He's in the car and slam that door and off he'll go. Get his leg. Get his leg, man. He probably slam the door on his legs to make sure they get him in. Once they got him in, boom, he's gone. Another abduction to the Erdogan government. What do you know? And nobody does anything about it. Nobody dares confront this man. Very troubling. Uh, Amichai Stein is reporting that uh, over in Toronto, Canada, van drives and pedestrians, up to 10 people have been struck. This is the images that they're sharing right now of the incident there. You can see, not probably so well on you guys there, but you can see a lot of people gathered here on the sidewalk here. Uh, I can't tell if you got bodies down as far as from an aerial view there, uh, but a very disturbing situation there. Uh, on the ground in Canada there. Whether or not it's a false flag or not, still, who knows? Still too early to tell on that there. So many false flags are going on just to justify wars and everything else. Uh, several people injured in a van plows into the pedestrians in Toronto. Cops says this is the article on it now on Fox. Several people in uh, Canada were injured on Monday when a white van plowed into pedestrians. Police said the extent of their injuries is unknown at this time. This is a developing story. Check back for updates, says Fox. We just loaded this a few minutes ago, so we'll have to see how that works out. And this is kind of a little off subject here, but I just thought I'd throw this in here for you guys in concluding for uh, today's kind of news broadcast here. Bus driver removed from position for praying with students. I kind of like his remark, though. He said that uh, it's what's missing is praying. Uh, but he got removed from his route. And they put him on a different route from what some people are saying there. But um, so Musa said Nathaniel was not fired, but he was has not been assigned. He has not he has not been assigned any routes since his removal from the route to Nasha Skola at a charter school with a large population of Russian immigrants. Nathaniel, pastor of an elite church and the firstborn, and for Grace Missionary Baptist Church in Minneapolis, said prayer is missing element from the lives of children and that of the he believes prayer should be returned to public schools. Uh, the bus driver said uh, he was surprised that anyone objected to the prayer, something he had began this winter as part of the pupils of a two-hour ride to school. He said he had told the parents about it and denied the allegations that any children were ever forced to pray. The students would volunteer to lead the prayer. Nathaniel said he believes the cause of the complaint was that one students were disciplined for being rude. This is not the First time Nathaniel has been punished uh, over his uh, commitment to prayer. Well, God bless a man for wanting to pray for somebody. That's that's a that's a good thing. I mean, I realize we don't necessarily know all the elements behind this, but uh, I will say one thing: the reason why there's so much crime in the world today is because, indeed, Bibles were removed from school in America, as well as prayer removed from the school in America. And give them time; they'll take God out of the pledge allegiance and everything else. Just give them a little bit more time. I'm Steve Benoom. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you guys for watching this evening here. I'll be talking to you again tomorrow. Shalom.